Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second episode of the series where we're pushing all the healers to KSM. You can watch the first episode on this channel already. In episode 1 we opened all the vaults on all of our characters and then we played some keys on our shaman, gathering some crests to upgrade our offhand shield and looking for a better second trinket as we had a pretty bad one. Now the shaman is already at KSM but we have a raid coming up soon so we wanted to upgrade our gear and get the best possible items before the raid and then after that we can focus on some of the other characters. So we ended up signing for this Arakara 10 and it was a sketchy looking group. People with relatively low IO but we didn't have many options because we were pressured by time. And we only needed 5 crafts, which means that we only needed to finish this dungeon, not even time it, and we would be able to upgrade the shield. Now, as you can see, the tank did some pretty big pulls in this area at the start, which uh, somehow we managed to handle. And we also saw that the mage is not doing that much DPS, but at this point that didn't matter. Dealing with the affix and the poisons is always tricky, because sometimes you just need to hold your poison cleansing totem for that. We also had a couple of warriors which basically cannot dispel themselves so we had to take care of that. But everything went quite okay including the first boss uh, for which we of course saved lost. We did have one that to the hunter standing in a swirly and then the mage died on the AOE because somehow he was just out of range from me and I couldn't hear him. But the boss was dead and that is all that mattered. Then the tank started pulling very small after the big pulls that he did in the beginning of the dungeon which was absolutely puzzling to me. I had no idea why he's doing that and what is going on, but we were fighting two mobs at the time, wasting a lot of time. And yes, this area could be dangerous, but especially in the beginning, pulling those two mobs that do absolutely nothing felt like a big time loss, but I didn't want to say anything because it's Arakara, right? It's a very lenient timer, we have a lot of time, so we can afford to fight one mob at a time. Very slowly we make it to the second boss and then the transition happens with the big circle in the middle. The tank, I don't know if he didn't know the fight or something, but he was baiting the frontal in the middle of the circle. That of course made it very tricky, we actually had deaths because people had to stay in the green shit and get extra stacks of the dot. In that first transition I think we only lost the hunter, although there were few critical moments that we managed to heal through. And I thought we were fine, we rest the hunter, but then after that, the tank just stood in one of the swirlies, get a few debuffs, get the dot, and eventually died, which we end up wiping too. I did have Link at this point, but I honestly didn't expect that the tank is going to die. So after the wipe, at least we had time to explain to him how he needs to tank in the transition, and we came back and killed the boss using Lust, as I felt like we are falling behind at this point. Eventually we make it to the last boss without any more deaths, everything is going smooth at this point, we still have a small chance to time, although we're not getting another lust, and then uh, I just disconnected. Thank you Blizzard, I actually blame you for this. But it is what it is, of course they wiped without me being there and then we came back and eventually killed the boss on the next attempt. Were we going to time it? Eh, probably not, it was gonna be very close, but it would be at least nice to see if that actually would happen. But we needed the crest, we got the crest, and the best part boys, we got the sack brute. Not only that, but it also has avoidance on it, so that's a huge huge win. We upgrade our crappy trinket, we upgrade our shield, all the way to rank 5, and then we went and smashed into the raid. We didn't get gear there, because we don't need much gear from Heroic, we didn't get gear from the first two mythic bosses, but we got a lot of crests, which allowed us to upgrade further our item level. So now we are decked out, and we decide to push a few more keys after the raid to fill our vault up, and we feel confident enough to go and push some 11s. Of course, for a start, I decided to pick an easy one, it's a Dawnbreaker plus 11. And it actually went pretty smooth, we had a couple of unfortunate deaths, people standing in the beams, people standing in the frontals. On this particular fight at the end of the second boss, uh, the priest ended up dying to the AoE, maybe I should have popped my ascendance a little bit earlier. But yeah, mistakes have been made, as I said, we were vibing, everything was quite smooth. We ended up killing the last boss and barely missing the two chests, maybe if those stupid deaths were avoided we could actually two chest the key. And if you actually want to watch this run, I'm going to upload it pretty soon on this channel, so you'll be able to watch it in full length. 
At the end, we got some IO, we got some boots from the chest, I'm not sure if we ended up using those, and although we made some mistakes, everybody was pretty happy with our overall performance. So they suggested, let's go and try the 12. Now, mind you, this is before the nerfs happened, so that was the busted 12s. And it was also City of Threads, which is definitely not the easiest of the keys that we could have gotten. We were also expecting that it's going to go very, very badly, but we decided to go and made a big first pool with Lust, and we uh, ended up dying and wiping, mainly because uh, we got a fronto, we also had some uh, interrupts that we didn't get, we overlapped some of our kicks, etc. So, as I said, that was quite expected, but everybody was still positive because of the previous run, so they suggested, okay, let's run it back into the 11. And so we did, the 11 actually went much more smoother, we had a whole 3 deaths before the first boss on the big pool before it, people were eating frontos, getting stunned by the dispelled orbs, etc. And then we got completely trolled by the running around game after the first boss, which is the worst part of this dungeon anyway, but we managed to get through, it just took us a little bit of time running back and forth. I was kinda scared of the second boss because we had a mage and a shadow priest which is too ranged, but it went relatively smoothly until almost the end when on the one of the big AoEs the rogue somehow ran away from the tank and in the opposite direction, so he was out of range for me, I couldn't hear him and he ended up dying. Probably my bad as well as I was far away from the tank, but uh, yeah, I'll take 50% uh, of the blame there. I was relatively happy how I managed my cooldowns and managed to heal everybody up, so killing the second boss was a big feat in my eyes, but we had basically half of the dungeon still left. The big poison bug on top of the stairs also took a victim, I guess that's expected there, and then we got to the third boss, which went relatively smoothly and I didn't expect that. Although it's a bug, I guess people have played this a little bit uh, already, so they knew to use defensives when there was a big AoE, we managed to do the soaks evenly and then I was managing my cooldowns pretty well as well, I always had something to heal when we needed. And let's also mention that our DPS was pumping, all three of them were doing pretty well on this key. And yes, bosses are tyrannical at this level, but they managed to kill them relatively fast, which I think contributed overall to the success of the key. This run, by the way, is already uploaded on this channel, so if you want to watch the full length, you can do so. Before the last boss, we did separate the mini bosses, but the second one, the big bug, ended up kicking our ass at the very end. I was kinda greedy because I didn't want to pop a cooldown, saving everything for the boss, and I underestimated the situation because the bug was very low already. We also got the affix in a very inconvenient moment, and we ended up having two or three deaths, but we still had plenty of time left in order to time the key. Now we still had 1% missing for the trash, so we ended up pulling two mobs on top of the boss, and of course we had lost. So that was kinda scary, but we were of course stacking on top of our tank and moving as a unit in order to bait the orbs and make sure nobody gets hit by them. We cleave down the extra two mobs, we managed to get the interrupts correct so they don't go off. The first mechanic that we get was a slam, but I managed to keep everyone healthy, so uh, there were no problems there. The next mechanic that we got was webs, which I think is a little bit easier, and luckily they managed to cleave everything down quite quickly so we can move out, but then I managed to uh, mess up. I was running in front of everyone, and when the tank got the big circle mechanic, the first op actually killed me. Definitely my bad, I should have expected that, and uh, I should have been behind the tank, not in front of him. Anyway, insta ank, so maybe they didn't notice. Then we got the webs as the next mechanic, and that was really bad because the mage blinked out and baited one of the orbs far, which I guess screwed up the priest because he got hit by that orb. Of course, that killed him, but we had two battle reses, so uh, we sent one of them instantly. I almost died to the next slam, but luckily the stone buak totem saves me. And from here on it was actually smooth, this time I knew better to stand behind the tank when the tank mechanic was about to come. Although I was a bit slow, I was still inside of the circle, this time I just managed to run out. So definitely something to improve on for the next uh, runs in this dungeon. 
At this point, the boss is actually very low already. The next mechanic is the webs. I have a link for that. And then the boss is basically dead. We time our second 11, City of Strats. And that manages to push us just above 2500 rating, giving us the Keystone Hero achievement. And yes, of course, it's KSM on all the healers, but of course we're going to get KSH on the Shaman, and of course we're going to push to 3k at least on the Shaman. So that's a one more mission accomplished, very happy with that. And let's just mention that uh, we actually liked uh, the vibe in this group, I ended up befriending the Rogue and the Mage, I think. So very positive end of the Shaman journey for now, although we still need a couple more keys to get all the slots in the vault filled in. So on the next day we jump on our Evoker, which is in a pretty good shape, 607 item level, 4 piece. Uh, we have some pretty bad rings, but it is what it is. We start with Necrotic Quake plus 7. We do a pretty big pull at the start with Lust, uh, which uh, starts uh, kind of okay, but then we miss an interrupt and I die to the channel. Kind of bad because everybody had their kick available, but that ended up being the only dead. I was releasing right there, so nothing to worry about yet at this point. We then pull the first boss at the back of the platform in the first room, which was kind of weird. I guess people didn't know where to bait, I ended up falling off, and the warlock who got the front though, he was still fine, but then he stood there, got meleeed and died from the ads, and the first thing that he does is he types with big letters in chat, healer question mark. I'm going like, oh my god, because I noticed that he's from the Azalon servers. We ended up battle resing him, killing the boss, and after that happened, he typed something in Spanish for healers. And I ended up typing some pretty bad things about his mom on my language, of course. And at this point, I was already kind of pessimistic that we're going to time the key, not to mention that uh, we tried to skip the mini boss, uh, we failed, the warlock died again, he mumbled something one more time, and at this point I didn't care at all. But everything actually went quite smoothly until the third boss, we had few deaths in the gauntlet, mainly to frontals, but nothing scary and no wipes. Let me note though that the shaman decided to lose the second boss, which was uh, inexplicable to me. So we only had a spear for uh, Stitch Flash, which was not perfect. So uh, he gets down, we eventually manage to get him to about 50% be before he jumps back up. We managed to get the hooks perfect up until this point, but I'm not sure who got the third hook. It was not aimed to the stage, so uh, he didn't get back down immediately. And although things were going relatively smoothly up until this point, I kinda started to panic because we had the affix going on, then he started spitting bleeds on people, and I kinda felt that we were falling behind, or at least I was falling behind on heals. So uh, when the next abomination came up and we managed to get him down with the hook, uh, I just panic lusted to make sure that we're going to finish him up on this go. He was actually below 50%, so maybe I didn't need to do that, but I decided to play it safe because, after all, the last boss shouldn't be that hard anyway. We also had the hunter die to the fixate, because I think we missed the hook or he was just too close, so anyway, I think that was not a bad decision. After all, we managed to kill the boss and get to the last one. Before the pool, the tank says, Lost on pool! I laughed, because we didn't have lost, but I guess he didn't even notice. We were also short on percentage, but we had plenty of time after we killed the last boss to run back down. He did a big pull, although we only needed 1%. Another inexplicable thing, but at the end of the day, we timed the key, big IO, no gear, and back to the queue, supposedly. All of a sudden, I got a message from the same mage that we run the 11 suite on my shaman the previous day. He wants me to go help them heal a key, carrying their druid friend. It's a plus 7, Siege of Boralis. I asked him if he's going to take my evoker, he said yes, and here we go. I told them that you're a pumper, he says. I laughed. I told them that I'm not, and they probably believed me because I died on the very first pool. But everything went relatively smooth up until after the second boss. We ended up uh, missing one of the cast there, I got silenced, I died. Not much I could have done because I was far away, my interrupt was on cooldown, so uh, yeah, this is how things started to escalate. I didn't run back, we kind of stabilized, uh, everybody was at half health though after the end of a pool, the tank rushed forward, he was also at half health, he ended up dying because of no interrupts. 
and it was pure chaos after that because we started kiting, we had more deaths, the tank came back, you know, the regular shenanigans when something like that happens. We ended up adding 6 or 7 deaths to our total count, but everything was smooth after we killed the third boss, and then we run down to the last boss. Somehow I managed to die on a swirly, I am not sure how that happened because I was outside of it, like, come on game. They of course uh, ended up laughing at me, they were like, uh, look at this guy, he has the mage tower mount and he dies to a swirly. Well, they're not wrong. They uh, ended up melting the last boss, uh, we were carrying the druid, he was feral, he didn't do a lot of damage, but the mage and the uh, elemental shaman were pumping, so overall it was a pretty easy key, we of course managed to, to chest it. I did not get any loot again, apart from the crest that uh, I could use to upgrade my gear, and at the end of the run they're like, hmm, do you want to come with us on the next key? It's going to be A plus 9, Mists of Tyrna's Sight. And I was a little bit scared because I didn't want to break their key on my uh, crappy old, but it was Mist of Tyrna's side, like it's one of the easiest keys, so uh, I decided, yeah, let's go do that. On top of that, the Druid switch, the Shaman also switch, we ended up with a Retribution Paladin and Shadow Priest. We lost the Poison Cleansing Totem, which was scary, but we had Mass Dispel and everybody could dispel themselves as well, apart from the tank, so it was not bad at all. I again die on the first pool, we didn't lost it, it was a big pool, but we didn't lost it. I ended up having two stacks of the bleed somehow, and I got spirit bolted, no interrupt, uh, so I guess that's fair. These guys were pumping though, we get to the first boss, we get to the intermission, and they melted that thing. They managed to get him almost 100 to 0 in the intermission itself, and what little health he had left, they finished after that, so that was pretty impressive. I of course uh, helped with whatever I could, but uh, what damage can you do as a healer? I did help a little bit with the mace after that, up until the point where the weak aura to solve it kicked in. And funny thing, in the middle of the mace, the weak aura actually stopped working after it started, so that was weird. But I guess that's not a bad problem to have. Everything went very smoothly after that, I was completely clueless on the second boss when we had to kill the correct clone. And if you want to watch me run headlessly around with no clue where I'm going, you can watch the full run uploaded on this channel already. We managed to get to the last boss without any more deaths, although healing the bugs before that was actually rough, but I managed to do it. On the last boss itself, they dragged it towards the wall, which I guess makes it a little bit easier to stack the adds, group them together and cleave them down. Definitely fan of the strategy, and because it's not a tyrannical boss they were pumping, the first shield was melted as soon as it appeared, so uh, that was also something very impressive. Basically, the boss flipped over and died, we did have to kill a few packs after that to get to 100% trash, but it was an easy 2 chest, and we got over 100 points of IO after that run. That puts us close to 1950 and we still have some very low keys, a couple of plus 3s that we have timed, so it's going to be an easy cruise now from here till KSM. After the run I did say hey guys thanks for the carry and they said ah no it's not a carry man, you kept us alive, we did good, so uh, thank you for coming. And that felt actually really good because I made a good friend on the previous day running some uh, relatively high keys on my shaman and today I got to play with him again on my ult. Very very positive experience, but we're not done yet, we're so close now that we're just going to pug into one more key and it's going to be plus 7 city of threats. We only have this timed at plus 3 so it's going to be a huge IO if we manage to time the key. We do have a shaman this time, so the affix should not be a problem. The druid looks a little bit shaky, he died on frontals at the start of the dungeon, his damage didn't seem to be that amazing. It was not horrible either though, so uh, he managed to carry his weight. I was again very scared of the second boss because all of my DPS were actually ranged. But props to them, I managed to heal them too without many problems, and the boss melted very quickly I guess because it's not a tyrannical boss. Everything was going relatively smoothly after that up until the third boss, that actually felt very hard to heal. Having a lot of range proved to be problematic on this boss rather than the second. So I struggled a lot with the heal absorbs, with the AoE, with people not using their defensives uh, that aggressively as the previous group. 
but luckily the evoker has a lot of buttons that you could be pressing so uh somehow i managed to keep everybody alive up until the end although we had some very critical moments and people dropping very very low we then decided to pull the two mini bosses on top of each other although we didn't have to do that the timer was looking very very good we handled that pretty well almost until the end where i basically proved that i haven't learned anything i underestimated the last stomp and uh, we actually ended up having three people die me included but it was almost dead the shaman anked and then managed to res us all so uh, we can finish the trash after and then kill the last boss Surprisingly, that was actually quite easy. People were stacking and we had lots, so the boss melted very, very quickly. And I managed not to get myself killed with the tank mechanic this time. So we ended up two chesting the key. We had over 2k, so now we have KSM on the evoker as well. Another go reach. Let's go. We even got hero pants that we can now catalyst and put a good enchant on top of them, upgrading our champion gear. And we can use the mark that we get to upgrade our veteran shoulders to hero track level as well. So overall, pretty good progress, pretty good keys. We didn't have many bricks apart from the 12. And we managed to get KSH on the Shaman and KSM on the Evoker. So looking forward to the next odds that we're going to be playing in the next episode. Feel free to watch episode 1 or some of the keys that you saw in this episode in full length uploaded on this channel. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you then. Now get out of here.